Valorant as a game has needed a hard carry, outplay oriented agent for quite some time now, and Yoru, the blue haired anime protagonist, just might fill that niche. What is up, ProGuys family? It's your host, Sergeant Frost, and today we have the only Yoru guide you will ever need. Let's not waste any more time, let's get right into this video. Yoru's signature ability is Gate Crash, and boy, can you make some cool outplays with this ability. Gate Crash allows you to harness a Rift Tether. You press fire to send the tether out moving forward in a straight line, and you can use Alt Fire to place the tether in a stationary location of your choosing. And when you finish placing it, you activate this ability again to teleport to the tether's location. Okay, this ability is where the skill gap between Yoru players will come in. There are three individual qualities you will need to have as a player when using this ability effectively. And those qualities are Map Awareness, Timing, and Foresight. After playing Yoru for quite some time, I have seen similar patterns in how both I and the enemy Yoru use this ability. Gate Crash can mainly be used similarly to how Tracer from Overwatch's recall ability works, where you place the portal behind you and you walk out into the map. And as soon as you get into trouble, you quick press your E key to reactivate this ability and go back to where you last placed your portal. Implementing this now you see me and now you don't strategy is really effective in post-plant situations. Yoru can take a lot of liberties when pushing and moving around the map simply because his portal is a get out of jail free card if you set it up behind you. The alternate way to use this ability is to send it forward in a straight line and reactivate it when the portal is just where you want it to be placed. In my opinion, using Gate Crash in this manner can be kind of clunky because it will stop if it comes in contact with a solid object, and it's not reliable when trying to place it in precise locations in front of you. I see Gate Crash being more of a personal safety recall ability rather than a map traversal tool for Yoru. You guys know we can't move on without our question of the day. Okay, I'll make this one quick. Today's question is, do you think agents should have invulnerability abilities in the game? Yoru's ultimate has stirred quite the controversy on social media on whether invulnerability should be allowed into the Valorant competitive landscape. Let us know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are. Yoru's C ability is Fake Out, and I bet you can't wait to see how you can mess with your enemies' heads when you learn how to properly use this ability. Yoru's Fake Out allows for him to equip an echo that mimics footsteps when activated. Press Fire to activate and send this echo forward in a straight line. And you can also press Alt Fire to place the echo in a stationary location and reactivate it at a later time to send it forward. Yoru's Fake Out ability is where he has the potential to really tilt his enemies when he times this ability right. Valorant is a game that relies so much on audio cues when it comes to finding your enemies around the map. Yoru can intentionally mess with your enemies' heads by tricking them into hearing something that's not actually there. Fake Out is great to send to locations in the opposite direction in which you wish to travel. The most interesting part of Fake Out though is how you're able to pre-place the footsteps in a set location and activate them later from a remote distance away. While Fake Out may appear to be simple and straightforward on the surface, if you dig deeper into the theory crafting for this ability, it will have a lot of uses. Many abilities in Valorant are distraction and illusion based, and their main focus is misleading enemies or throwing them off to where you are actually positioned. A few distraction based abilities in Valorant include Sky's Ultimate and Tiger ability and Raze's Boombot. Fake Out just like those abilities can be used to confuse your enemies to where you are actually located. You can pre-place these steps in a certain location and reactivate them when enemies are near. This can cause the enemy to flee or swing the corner believing that another player is actually standing there. On defense, a lot of players like to pre-fire angles and corners when they hear attackers running close by. With Yoru's Fake Out, you can send fake footsteps ahead to trick an enemy into pre-firing, and shortly after they expose themselves, you can swing on them and get a free kill. Distraction-based abilities when used intelligently can allow you to outplay players in some of the most creative ways possible. Riot just might have created the best flash in Valorant with Yoru's Blindside ability. Let's dive in so I can explain what I mean. Blindside is Yoru's Q ability. It will allow you to equip an unstable dimensional fragment from reality. You can press fire to throw this fragment and it will activate its flash once it makes contact with another hard surface in the world. Wow, there's a lot to unpack with this ability. For months now, the competitive community has begged Riot to create a pop flash-like ability to give attackers utility tools to help them break on the sites. So what is a pop flash, you might ask? A pop flash is when a player throws a flashbang well enough to fully blind an enemy, preventing that enemy from reacting so that they can look away in time. The reason Blindside is considered a pop flash per se is because the fact that it needs to come into contact with the surface before detonating means that players can get really creative with how they implement this flash in game. You can angle this flash off of a wall or off the ground and completely catch a player off guard. The reason being able to pop flash is important is because it can turn into a free frag if you time it right against your enemies. There is no counterplay when you get killed while full flash from a stun that you didn't see or hear coming. This has the potential to be one of the most powerful flashes in the game. Not only does Blindside have two charges, but Yoru also has a very far range for how far he is able to throw this ability. The most interesting part is how creative players will get when using this ability around the map. Like I said before, a well-placed Yoru Blindside is effectively a pop flash from CSGO. This means attackers now have an even more useful flash that can be used to catch defenders off guard when attacking a site. 
The fact that this ability has decent range means that you can really reach out and blind people that you normally wouldn't be able to with Phoenix, Reyna, and Omen flashes. Yoru's blindside is honestly his most impactful and powerful ability in this kit, and that is saying a lot because we haven't even talked about his ultimate yet. Yoru's ultimate is one of a kind and a lot to break down. Let me explain and I hope I can help you make some sense of it. Dimensional Drift equips a mask that can be used to see between dimensions. You press fire to activate it and it enters you into Yoru's dimension. While active, you are invisible and invulnerable to all damage from the enemy team. This ultimate is what really turns Yoru into the multiverse manipulating, blue-haired anime protagonist that he is. This ability not only allows for him to go completely invisible, but also makes him invulnerable to all damage and CC from the enemy team while his ult is active. Yoru will not be able to use his gun or other abilities while inside of his ultimate though. This ability at the end of the day has two uses. You can use this ult to proactively get behind the enemy team and outplay them by long flanking them and mulling them down when you successfully reach the backline. Or you can use this ability reactively and activate it when you need to reposition and get out of an unfavorable situation. There's no shame in activating Yoru's ultimate after getting a frag and using it to get away to safety and live to fight another day. Dimensional Drift is one of the most useful ultimates that Riot has added into Valorant, and I'm glad to see the dev team branching out and making more self-stimulant ultimates that buff your individual agent. If you want more help learning about how you can improve your gameplay in Valorant, make sure you check out ProGuides.com. You can quickly upload your gameplay VODs on our website, and we have coaches online 24-7 who will quickly get back to you and help you on your journey towards improving in Valorant. ProGuys.com will teach you the necessary skills to rank up faster, enjoy the game more, and receive premium help from our online coaches. You can book a session whenever you need it according to your schedule. No more time being stuck in your ELO. Head over to ProGuys.com to begin the journey to the rank of your dreams. Let me start off this style of play section by saying Yoru is one of the most fun and thoughtful agents I have played since Valorant has been released. He is a fast-paced entry fragger that requires the user to think on their feet and use their brain when it comes to utilizing Yoru's tools in his kit to outplay people. Yoru has the same playstyle feel of Tracer from Overwatch. You get in, you do your damage quickly, and you get out immediately. Really good Yorus will be able to take advantage of his kit to its fullest potential and become a real annoyance to the enemy team. And don't get me started on his flashes and his ultimate. There are only a few abilities that cause players to run for their lives in fear when they hear it activated. And Yoru's ultimate Dimensional Drift is now on that short list. Yoru is an agent that is a meta changer, and honestly, I think he has the potential to change the pace that the game is played at. Unfortunately, Yoru is a mechanically demanding agent when it comes to piloting him as an agent, and it will take a lot of experience and many games for most people to get the hang of him. When it comes to team comps to build around Yoru, you will have a lot of options in the long run. Yoru is a duelist, which means he will always have a place inside any team comp, and he also possesses multiple flashes, so he can be swapped out for Reyna, Phoenix, Breach, and Sky in a team comp. Yoru will most likely fall into the Lurker role rather than the main entry frag. While he does have some of the best flashes in the game, he does not possess a heal ability, so running in first before your team will not always be the move with Yoru. His kit is based around distraction and tricking your enemies, so he will be useful flanking and lurking on the opposite side of the map. A great team comp for example would be Yoru, Phoenix, Brimstone, Sova, and Sky. Phoenix, Brim, Sova, and Sky are very self-sufficient agents that have smokes, healing abilities, and info gathering abilities that allow them to function as a four-man unit on their own. This frees up the potential for Yoru to lurk on the other side of the map and get free picks or go on the long flank and utilize his portal and ultimate to come behind the enemy team and ruin their entire day. The possibilities are endless for Yoru, and it's up to you and your team to see how he fits into your team comp. For our final thoughts on Yoru, we have to be honest. He is not an agent for everybody, but for some people, he can be a tool that when mastered will carry you to the highest of elos. Yoru has a great kit that has a low skill floor but a high skill ceiling. His blindside and fakeout abilities allow him to not only catch his enemies off guard, but also gives him the potential to outplay them if used creatively and at the right time. The new dynamic of adding a flash into the game that can be thrown to any location and has the ability to bounce off of surfaces and pop flash means that attacking in Valorant just got a little more fun with the addition of Yoru. Not to mention his ultimate and portal give him a map presence like no other agent we have seen before in Valorant. Well guys, that's all we have for today. If you liked the video, then be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing. Be sure to also visit ProGuides.com to gain some access to some truly amazing coaching. You can choose from any of our high elo coaches to help you develop your skills that you need to reach the rank that you deserve. All social media links are down in the description below. Remember to stay safe out there and I will see you all again very soon.